Welcome back. On this show, we've been considering the possibility of past lives as we ask the question, have we been here before? So far, we've seen TV critic and journalist Tina Baker in a regression session where she appeared to describe the life of Miranda, a prim and proper Victorian lady. I'll tell you what we call him. The buffoon. Whiskers and red face and big port belly. Tina will be joining me in a moment to talk about her regression experience, but where do you stand? Are you a cynic or not? Our experts each have their own opinions. I think people going into um, a past life regression would have prepared themselves at some subconscious level that they are going to have an experience because they want it to happen. The greatest predictor for having a past life memory is the desire for that person to have some kind of wonderful regressive re experience and that is how it's based. Many people ask where is the past life memory stored? All of our past life memories are stored deep within the subconscious mind so that all of our sets of senses, our smell, our taste, touch, sight, and hearing. From the moment that we create any of these senses, they're all stored there forever from each and every past life. Sometimes people will actually start to act in a particular way. Their posture will change and they'll start to speak in a different accent. This is because when people are relaxed, all their inhibitions are stripped away and people can become remarkably good actors. Whether you believe in the idea of past lives or not, there can be some undeniably spooky accuracies in these tales from the past. Time to see if our highly qualified and dapper historian has dug up any evidence on Tina's horticultural story. Tina's regression tells us the story of Miranda, a vibrant Victorian woman living here in leafy Surrey over a hundred years ago. It's packed full of the most fantastic details, one of which I think is really going to amaze you. But where does it start? Well, this is what she told us about her home. What does your house look like? It's very beautiful. My conservatory is my favourite place. Were you good with plants? Oh, yes. I love my plants. What Tina's highlighted is the Victorian obsession with gardening. Now, at this time, some of our greatest botanists, people like Darwin, were out scouring the world, bringing back rich and exotic plants, and growing them at home became the favourite occupation for wealthy Victorians. And in order to do it, they designed the conservatory. So all that fits rather well, but there's also one or two other details she gives us about life at home. A housekeeper would open the door. She lived with us. And did anyone else work for your family? We had the garden boy, but I had to tell him what to do. Servants are perhaps the classic image of the Victorian household, and even the poorest of middle-class families would have had at least a couple. So I think it's quite possible that Miranda maybe even had a housekeeper, a housemaid, a cook, and that garden boy that she talks about. So to me, the image of the household itself is pretty convincing, but what do we know about Miranda's life? I didn't like dancing. To be honest, it bored me. I'd rather sit down and read a good book. I should like to have married before, but no one asked. Now this fits together. Dances were the favoured hunting ground for women seeking a husband. And if Miranda had shunned these events, she might not have found a partner at all. Well, I was very interested in anything new any new propagation, anything new in farming, anything to do with how to improve crops and improve growing. I think this part of Tina's regression is absolutely fascinating. Now, the mid to late 19th century was a great time for invention and inquiry, and huge leaps were being made in the sciences, in agriculture, in engineering, and in botany. In short, it was a time of discovery, and Miranda embraced it. Did people know you as being good with plants? Yes. I had a certain reputation. I was very proud of my plants. I think the image of Miranda as the expert gardener is absolutely captivating. And it's an interesting one because in the man's world of the 19th century, women were actually making the study of 
plants and gardens very much their own. One of the most famous being Gertrude Jekyll, someone we now regard as one of the founders of modern gardening. Tina gives us a rich and colourful picture, but there's one more detail that's absolutely striking. Spanning 60 years, the Victorian era saw a wealth of ladies' fashions. Early trends were large hoop skirts, but in the 1860s, attention turned towards the back of the skirt and bustles became the new vogue. Beautiful skirt. It's gathered at the front and it has lace and it's silk. This is fantastic. Remember, it's 1880 and Tina describes her dress as having not quite a bustle. Well, between 1880 and 1883, fashion changed to the princess line of dress. It had a long corset and draped sheets of cloth around the skirt that removed the need for a bustle. It was only around for three years, but it's the right dress in the right year. Extraordinary. For me, Tina's regression has been a delightful foray into the lighter side of Victorian England and one extraordinary woman's passion for discovery and learning. Now, I can't tell you for certain whether Miranda really existed or not, but I'd like to think so.